Hey guys, what's going on? Back with another video. How's everybody doing? Uh, so in this video today, we're playing another uh, flight simulator or air traffic control simulator game. This is Track On uh, 2012 on PC. Uh, so this is made by Field Air. So thanks to Field Air for sponsoring this video. This is made by these same people, uh, which if you remember a while back made the um, the the Tower 3D Pro game, uh, which basically in that game uh, you were in the tower at an airport and you had to kind of orchestrate. Uh, you know, departures, landings, taxiing, things like that. Uh, this game, however, this is actually, it's, well, it's more of a simulator, uh, is really cool because you get to be the, play the role of a track on, which if you don't know what that stands for, it stands for Terminal Radar Approach Control. Uh, and essentially what that is, is you're kind of the go-between, uh, between the tower that's at the airport, which is what you are, uh, when you play the Tower 3D Pro, you know, like I said, you help, uh, you know, planes, you know, taxi, back up from the gate, uh, depart, approach, land, things like that. Uh, so you're a go between between that uh, that role and the center. So if you've ever played X plane, you know you're talking to the tower, and then they the the track on tells you, okay, contact center on. You change that frequency, and then the center, uh, you know, you're up in the air, and then they guide you uh, to the next basically regional uh, track on, which then guides you in uh, to the airport, and then you contact the tower. So you're essentially the go between between the tower. Uh, and the center in this game, and you have to manage the airspace. So as you can see here, uh, you have some airports you can choose from. Uh, so sector selection is Miami. Uh, MIA, you have a choice of Miami, uh, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. So we're going to go with Miami for this one. Why not? Nice warm weather. Uh, and so for arrival runways, you get to choose. We'll just kind of keep things simpler. Uh, and we'll just go with these two here. I don't have the same one for uh, arrival and departure. So runway, uh, basically 08, and this one's 26. Airport selection. Let's choose Miami International. It's gonna be K M I A because uh, you can see like a, like a smaller airport, regional airport, different one. Uh, you'll, you know you're gonna have less runways, so we'll just stick with uh, with uh, Miami International. Uh, and then the time here, I believe the time is in UTC, uh, so you, it's not like your local time, so you have to kind of factor that in. So we're gonna go with like you know like kind of like rush hour, uh, not rush hour, but you know just we want to have a you know busier time here. We'll go with. Uh, 1700 hours controller position uh we can do both we'll see what happens then wind conditions uh you know again we'll keep it simple here uh take it through the settings uh so you get your volume full screen 1080 texture resolution high uh depth density departure density things like that uh now what you want to keep track of here is this um when you're doing your simulation uh are the the key commands so on one hand you can use uh your your microphone uh, to control, you know, traffic and things like that, much like you could in the Tower 3D Pro game. Uh, on the other hand, you can also just use uh, the, the the key commands here. So I, what I did, I just took a picture on my phone of these, so you kind of have it up. Well, I mean, you can actually have it in the game. There's a button you can press, um, which I'll show you to, um, you can just kind of pull this up on the fly. Uh, you can also do it uh, through voice controls, really, whatever you like. Uh, I tend to like just using it through the, the key command, so I'm not, you know, like kind of struggling with it. Um, or, 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 you know, like trying to take too long while I got other planes backing up, having to sound everything out. Like if I just do, I don't know, like if I want to say, you know, climb and maintain 5,000 feet, I can just come in here, control C, you know, 5,000 feet, enter, and you're on your way. Whereas if you had to, you know, speak it out, uh, which is actually realistically what you would do, uh, which you can do, you know, might just either, you know, take longer, you might make a mistake. Like I know I do, like, for instance, when you have to, uh, you know, say the tail number of the plane is, you know, NA569, you'd have to, you know, pronounce, you know, November Alpha 569, or which, you know, I mean, that, that that's fun too, but I think like it's really just dependent on how you like to play. If you just want to hit control this and the number, you can do that. But really, however you want to uh, do your simulation, uh, you're able to do so, which is something that's really cool about this. Uh, come down here, information, profile, stuff like that. Uh, also, if you're looking for the manual, which I highly recommend you read uh, before trying to simulate as, uh, as complicated as this, as detailed, uh, as this is really, really detailed, I think. Like a lot of times, most other flight simulators, not flight simulators, any kind of uh, aviation simulator, a lot of times there's, you know, like if you think about like Microsoft Flight Simulator X, you know, there's, there's really kind of, you know, not so much arcade uh, but there's a lot of kind of, you know, trade-offs and things like that, you know, like X-Plane, you know, you basically just, you know, use the little menu there, whereas with this, it's really comprehensive and really every, every step of the way, you're really stepping into the shoes, uh, of a real world track on operator. Uh, so you want to understand all that stuff. I think the manual, if you get this from Steam, which I believe is the only place, uh, where you can get this game, 
Uh, if you just go to Steam, right click on it, and then you can get the menu. It'll just bring it up. You want to read through that, make sure you understand what you're doing in here because it is going to keep scoring, as you can see. Uh, well, I guess we'll see here in a minute. Uh, how I do with that. So let's go ahead and get started. Also, there's also a, uh, a multiplayer aspect to it. I believe uh, you can play with four others, something along those lines. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to go ahead and do it uh, do it solo here. Go ahead and start. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, we already got departures. Uh, getting ready to go here. You can see uh, everything. Score zero. Game speed uh, one. And we're starting off here. And we have our three departures ready to go. So far since I've been playing through this, I haven't had any arrivals yet. I don't know if it has to do with the time of day or something like that airport uh but anyways so you what you're looking at right here i'll just we're not gonna we're gonna just uh you know not not play for a second here while i explain everything uh so this is the uh this is a vfr overlay this map here so you can see uh it's probably not the same map that you're used to seeing uh but it is you know really a, a real aviation map so like for instance if you're an x-plane there's you know ifr there's vfr aerial satellite uh, all sorts of different maps. Google Maps. Departure. There's all kinds of maps. Here, and this guy's going to start six, three, getting on me here. He can wait a second here. Um, but basically, a VFR map, what it's going to show you here, as you can see, this is the Miami airspace. Uh, this is basically Miami, as you can think of it here. So if you just kind of see the, the coast, it's not so much a geographic map. So don't kind of look at it that way. But you can understand that's kind of what we're looking at here. You can kind of see uh, all that through here. Um, imagine Florida. So this will be the eastern coast. Florida Keys. Uh, west coast of Florida coming up through here. Uh, then if you zoom in here, you can see, uh, MIA, KMIA, this is our airport, uh, right here. This is where we are. So this is where our planes are going to be departing, uh, from and arriving to, uh, and then around here, you can see other airfields, uh, runways, uh, regional airports, things like that. Uh, down here on the right, you can see, uh, basically, you know, the, the history event log of what's happening here. Uh, the commands is where you're going to issue your commands. You can either speak, you can type, uh, the hotkey menu I was telling you about was this right here. So you press this. Uh, you have to hold to make that appear. It'll show you all the different key commands. Uh, for instance, if you want to tell a plane to descend and maintain, I don't know, 5,000 feet, you would press Control A, 5,000, send, uh, and then that's how you will uh, do your job. Over here on the left, you have this control panel, which you might really want to take a look at because it helps you make, or helps you, it helps make things more visible and less visible. So, like for instance, uh, one of the things I was playing around with, I believe, is it was a V, yeah, so VFR maps. You can see these. Uh, these roots, these guidelines, you can make that Departure. more bold and less bold as you choose. Uh, really, anything you want. Um, climbing to 5, you can come up here to compass, things like that, target history. Uh, one of the bigger changes, though, that you might notice, I believe it's leader. Uh, so when you hit this here, so it's basically the tag that's identifying each aircraft in the airspace. Uh, you can make that closer and further away from the uh, the blip of the aircraft on the on the VFR map itself. Um, so you can adjust that. So really that would be useful if you have a really crowded airspace, if you have all planes coming and going, uh, then you're going to want to, you know, try to have it be not, you know, uh, right on top of the plane. Cause then they're all going to be right on top of each other. So for instance, if this plane was a little bit more to the left, you're not really gonna be able to read these, uh, which happened earlier when I was doing it. Like if you have it's too congested, then you're going to want to back that up uh, a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So, so we can see uh, what everybody is up to. Uh, the other thing you want to understand is that much like when you play, uh, or when you use the simulator for uh, Tower 3D Pro, you know, it's really on you to manage the congestion and making sure that you don't have, you know, people landing in and in, in, in departing on the same runway, um, that the airspace uh, is clear. Really, the main focus here is you want to make sure, uh, you know, I, I tend to like departures more than arrivals, uh, and the reason for that is you want to get people out of your airspace and make it less uh, congested, less complicated, so the faster you can do that, the better. Uh, departure. you also want to help planes, um, ascend, you want to have planes in your airspace, 5, you know, one at 10,000, five to just spread them out. So there's, like I said, so that there's less congestion and get them on their way. Um, because on the other hand, the flip side of that is when you have arrivals, you have people descending and converging on your airspace, which is something that's very difficult, uh, to manage. So we have these three planes, as you can see here. Also, uh, you're going to have your routes, uh, different approaches, things like that vectors which you can uh, deal with as you go along. That's really more relevant um, for, for, for I'd say, departures because arrivals is going to be pretty much the same ILS uh, that you would fly in and out of here. Uh, so now we go over here, you can see our list of departures. You can scroll through the list, which at this point has become quite long, I would assume. Actually, no, it's just it's just an illusion because of the scroll bar here. And if you have three flights, so for instance, if you're communicating with this one, like I said, you have to use the phonetic alphabet. You, know, you have to say Foxtrot Romeo Tango 429. Uh, or alternatively, you come in here to your hotkey list and say, you know, you want something to send and maintain. You do control A and then the altitude, uh, and then you would hit send. 
right here on this right side, you're going to have your time. Uh, like I said, in UTC, you can, uh, you can make sure you see that. Uh, also, your wind direction, something you might want to manage. Uh, your game speed, so if the simulation... Really, game speed has to do with time of day. Uh, so if it's, you know, like off hours or middle of the night or something like that, and, you, and you're noticing that you're having less flights and you want to kind of turn up the action, you can increase the game speed to try to, uh, to, try to mitigate that as well. Uh, also your score, which you can see is just plummeting because I've been explaining the whole game instead of actually playing it, uh, is right here in the middle. Uh, right now we have zero knots for speed. Uh, and then our, you can scroll through your history here, see everything that was going on and, uh, you can manage all that stuff. At this point we have a bunch of flights that are just stacking up here, but it seems like, um, it seems like they already took off. So if we're in here at KMIA, which is right here. Uh, now we have another flight. We're going to try to deal with them. Air 49003 with information kilo at 900, climbing to 5,000. All right, so we're going to want to answer this flight here. So 49003, I believe, was the tail number. So what you can do here, if you want to address this plane, you can go ahead. If you look down here, uh, you can see how we have this uh, Foxtrot Romeo Tango 783 selected. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on the, was it, was it 4903? We'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, let me go ahead and give them a command, click on hotkey. Uh, they said they're going to climb to 5,000, so we'll just go ahead and uh, do control C, climb and maintain 5,000. Then we'll go over here and hit send. Climb and maintain 5,000 field air 49003. And there you go, and it's as simple as that. You can also close windows, open windows, move them uh, wherever is more convenient for you. Uh, and that is that. So, all right, guys, you can check this game out or this simulator out. Oh, don't know what that was that just popped up. Uh, by going to the link that is down in the description below. Again, this is Track On 2012 by the same people, uh, by Feel Lair, the same people that bring you Tower 3D Pro. Uh, I believe there's a way to get all the simulators as a pack. It's really up to you what uh, what you like to do, you know, what kind of simulations you enjoy. Um, like I said, there's kind of different levels to it. So the Track On. Uh, is basically the intermediary between the uh, the tower and the center. So it's really wherever you want to be. You can be in the tower. You can be the track on. Really whatever you want to do. Uh, all sorts of stuff for you to be able to simulate. I know there's some... It's really like different levels of, 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 of people that are kind of into this stuff. Like I think there's... People who just want to play X-Plane. People that are really into, the, you know, like the kind of the science, the mechanics of it. It's really, you know, whatever you want to do. There's really a simulator for that. And feel there... Will uh, will help you get there. So you again, you can check that out by going to the link down in the description below. Uh, but other than that, until next time, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching.